slip for the drawing. That way you might be able to win that fantastical prize at the end. Um, <clears throat> so this is Dolores Woods. She is our new registered dietitian of nutrition. Is that how you guys pronounce it now? I know they added the N, right? Registered dietitian nutritionist. Okay. Right, so yeah. dietitian. Yeah. Um, so she's gonna be talking to us today about our Eat This, Not That presentation. Um, thank you all for showing up. And uh, she's gonna be our new dietitian um, that you would be able to schedule counseling sessions with over at the Student Life Center or mm -hmm. online as well. Correct? Right. Okay. Yeah. So, without further ado, here's Dolores. Hi, everyone. How are you? Um, so, is everyone here a full-time student? Yes. No. Yes. No. 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 <laughs> I'm graduating this summer. I'm going to take classes. Okay. So, some graduates, good. And what are you studying? What are some things that you're studying? Psychology. Psychology, nursing biology. Nursing biology. Yeah, I'm trying to be a science dietitian too. Oh, cool. Anyone else? Biology. Biology. Good. So, do I assume you, since you're here, you all have an interest, I hope, in maybe eating well, eating better, things like that. So, today we will be talking about some pretty much debunking some myths about nutrition. There are a lot of things out there that we hear, so I'm hoping to just clarify some things, we, some marketing claims, misconceptions, and overall talk about, um, at the end, some tips on how to just eat better. So let's see. We've all, we're going to start off by talking about food, food myths. So, so what are some types of food myths you've heard? Is it true that if you eat chocolate, you get pimples? Is that true? I don't know. That is not necessarily true, no. Is it? Okay. So that would be one. But we've all heard things like carbs are bad for you. They make you fat. Or, um, you know, protein, protein, protein. I need more protein. That's also another one. Um, the fat you eat is the fat you wear. What does that even mean? when people say that. That's not all bad, is it? No, that's not all bad. So that probably comes from just years back. And we'll talk about all of these. But um, what about juicing? Is, is anyone here juicing or eating or drinking juice detox things? <laughs> good. It's very good. But um, so let's talk about these, though. So carbs. Are carbs bad for you? Why not? They're energy. All right, so carbs are energy. What else makes them not a bad food? Mm -hmm. Some carbs are fiber. So fiber, yes, is something that's really important. And carbs, some carbs will ha are a good source of uh, fiber, yes. Um, do they make people fat? It sounds like they don't. If you don't exercise. So if you overindulge, right, and it's all about moderation. So if you eat too many carbs, yes, you'll gain weight. If you eat too much protein, you will gain weight. If you eat too much of everything, odds <coughs> are you will gain weight. But carbs on their own are not bad. Um, I hear this all the time, especially with students coming in and wanting to be on a high protein diet to and low carb to lose weight, and that's not necessarily um, healthier. So, what about protein? Do you need more protein? We need a little bit of protein. Equal amount. Equal amount. Yeah. Answers moderation. Mm -hmm. So moderation. So you don't need the, as much protein as people think. Um, in fact, most Americans eat too much protein, especially animal protein coming from red meat. So that's not necessarily um, healthy either. And we'll talk about all of the like what's better for you at the towards the end. What about sugar being addictive? Is there such a thing as a food addiction? I mean, it, it 
creates chemicals in the brain where it makes you feel happy if you just have it. Oh, uh, addicted to caffeine? No, so caffeine, so sh sugar. So you're talking about some chemicals in the brain? Just a little taste of sugar and you're like, ooh. Yeah. Oh, sugar rush away. So an addiction, something like alcohol or drugs, they they change the chemical pathways and the circuits in our brain and they create that rewarding system. So that's where the addiction comes from. But food different. is different. It doesn't create the same types of, there are some changes in the chemistry, but it doesn't have that reward system. So it's not really an addiction. Yes? Uh, more like an addiction to dopamine, right? To make it, to feel, to feel good. So you eat to feel good, you go on social media to feel good. So, you know, Reward yourself with a cake. A lot of times people, and it's the rewarding, right? Uh, it's more of the behavior, but not the biology of it. So there's no such thing as a food addiction. A lot of times um, people also come to me about that. Like, I'm addicted to um, Cheetos, actually, someone talked to me about last week. I was like, well, it's not necessarily an addiction. Let's talk about when you're eating them, why you're eating them, the habit. So with something with eating, it's more of a compulsion. It's compulsive overeating that can be managed through behavior change, but not necessarily an actual chemical dependency. Um, so just, just something to think about, because we hear this a lot on, on the media, especially with stories about people being addicted to food and you know, it just sounds so dramatic, but it's not an addiction. It's a compulsion. Um, what about juicing? and? Detoxifying. This is every single day on the radio. I hear some commercial about a juice cleanse and. Is it BS? Yeah. <laughs> so why is it BS though? Uh -huh. Does it actually clean your system? I assume. Yeah. So for the biology uh, majors in here, why would that be <clears throat> unnecessary? Our body does it on its own, exactly. That's what our liver's for, that's what our kidneys are for, that's what, I mean, our body is really smart. It knows how to um, really take out any waste. If we just need to treat it right, treat it better. But our body's gonna do that on its own. We don't need fasting, we don't need any types of juice cleanses or any other types of, gosh, I've heard of like a, lemonade cleanse, a maple syrup cleanse. I mean, you name it, right? It's everywhere. So we don't need that because our body does all of that on its own. So it's just a waste of money. So yes, it's, you know, it's not necessary. Don't waste your money on any of that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I mean, it's big business. So we just have to be a little more um, savvy about the claims we hear. What about the alkaline line diet? That seems to be really popular now, too. I get a lot of questions about that. What is that so it so keeps your pH in check. What do you well, think? That's not really going to, you know, like make you lose weight or it's it probably going to change your mindset. <laughs> hey, don't drink this. Don't drink that. Maybe. Uh, that sugary drink because it's too acidic. Right. right. That that's yeah, that's true. But in our body, um, and again, with the whole pH levels in our body, our lungs and kidneys and liver, all of our organs pretty much regulate our pH. So we don't really need um, like alkaline water. Mainly, I've seen a lot of like a big push on that. So we don't need a lot of those things. It's just really a business. Um, weight loss is a huge business, all those products and diets um, in this country. So we're gonna focus, so yeah, don't, don't buy any of it. It's pretty much the, um, the point. <laughs> sure. So um, any questions about that? Well, all right, so we're gonna move on and talk about some marketing claims and labeling. So one of the f um, big ones I think that has the most impact on our health um, are their trans fats. Does everyone know what trans fats are? They're artificial fats. Artificial fats. Um, how are they, or why are they even out there? Who created trans fats? Well, you 
can say like a little bit of it is good, but the, the amount we eat is too much. So I would say not even a little bit is good. Just so trans fats, they're artificially made, as you said, and so pretty much what uh, trans fats are are fats that are shelf stable. So a lot of pack foods that are packaged and processed that we see on the shelves, they need to stay there for a while. And so the trans fats were created to make them pretty much shelf stable. So they're artificially made and they increase the risk of heart disease. They also increase the bad cholesterol. So there are things like trans fats and then saturated fats. Saturated fats come from animal products like meats, cheese, dairy. Those are also bad for our heart, but trans fats are actually worse. They're worse than the saturated fats. So not even a, I wouldn't even recommend a little bit. Um, my philosophy about food is that there's really no bad food. It's the amounts we eat. But with trans fats, I would say that's definitely the bad food out there. Like, yes. From my perspective, right, as a Hispanic person, mm -hmm. it's like super difficult to stay away. So, what <laughs> foods have the trans like, fats? For example, like you know, like tortillas. You know, that's like a staple right. in a Hispanic household. Like, you don't, you don't run away from that. You go to your grandma's house. And right. So. Let's talk about what foods have trans fats, just to make it clear, because tortillas are actually, the uh, corn tortillas most likely are not gonna have the trans fat. Some of the flour ones may. Um, so trans fats are in a lot of baked goods. So your donuts, um, Twinkies. <laughs> yeah, a lot of the um, baked goods that are on the shelf, a lot of Margarines are going to have the trans fats. Just a lot of processed foods is going to have it. The whole foods do not, so tortillas don't. Depending on where you get your pan dulce, it may or may not. But that's why it's important to read the labels. So the main thing is not to look for the trans fat sign. A lot of things are going to say just zero grams trans fat. But that's misleading because according to the laws, an item can have up to 0.5 grams of trans fats per serving and still say zero trans fat. So what a lot of companies do is that they decrease the serving size so that they fall with below that 0.5 grams and they're able to say that it's trans fat free. But then if you eat two servings, well, you're probably getting more than you should. So what you wanna look at is the partially hydrogenated oils. That's what doesn't have the trans fats. Um, this one, see this margarine, it's supposed to be good for you. It have all these claims on there saying that it's proven to reduce cholesterol, um, zero grams of trans fat. But when you look at the ingredients, it does have the partially hydrogenated fats. So that's the key, looking at the labels. So I know a lot of, um, you're, you're talking about Mexican foods, but a lot of Mexican food's really good for you. You have rice, beans, a lot of vegetables. Um, so there are a lot of really good, and I am too, so I know what you're talking about, but I think that you could still ha yeah. be, have healthy foods, but it's the trans fats that it's in the processed food. So we just want to always make sure we're eating more of the whole foods. Yeah. Yes, of course. I mean, you know, so, hard. <laughs> so questions about trans fats? So all, a lot of the snack foods, pretty much anything, anytime you're going down the aisle, you want to look at the labels of what, looking at the ingredients, any of the marketing claims, making sure that what you're eating is actually good for you. What about natural? Is that, what does that mean when you see natural on a label? It doesn't mean anything, that's right. So the FDA doesn't have, um, it hasn't defined this term. So I've seen like natural Cheetos, <laughs> um, Nature Valley. It, what's natural about those bars? I'm not sure. Um, and then the all natural Ben and Jerry's chocolate chip cookie dough. So it obviously doesn't mean anything. Uh, so when you look at that, it, I mean, just disregard it because it, like you said, it doesn't, mean anything, the FDA is not um, defining this term. Now organic, 
So anyone here like to purchase organic? Sometimes the produce. So some things. So organic food is a little more expensive. Um, and honestly, with organic food, I think that it's a personal preference. If you're, if there are certain foods that you buy more of and you feel more co comfortable buying the organic, then that's fine. With organic food, there's there's really no difference in the nutritional value as with uh, conventional food products. So an organic apple is pretty much going to be the same as a conventionally grown apple. Um, now, with organic, again, some items still could be pretty highly processed. So, I mean, you could go to Whole Foods and they have aisles and aisles of organic processed foods, right? So just because it's organic doesn't make it healthy. Here you have organic mac and cheese, the organic Oreos. So there are a lot of things that are organic, but doesn't necessarily mean they're healthy. With the produce, um, one of the benefits of organic foods, it, it's really more about the environment. So it's better for the farmers because they're not exposed to so many toxic pesticides. It also, um, it's better for the soil. Organic farms are much more resilient over time. Um, the yields are better also. So with organic food, I, the reason I say it's a personal preference is because if it's something important to you, um, you know, the environment, things like that, then buying organic, definitely. But um, I know that sometimes it's a barrier for a lot of people to buy organic food just because it is more expensive. And I, I just always feel, you know, if you're going to eat an apple, I don't care if it's organic or not, as long as you eat that or your fruit or any kind of vegetable. It's better to eat conventionally grown than nothing at all. Questions about organic foods? Yes. Uh, is the what? And meats, because I know I, they say that if you eat, because you, well, me personally, like when I eat my regular chicken, it gets me really bloated. But whenever, whenever I eat organic, it's I don't know, I, I don't know. You think that's the difference? So it's the so feed. I, I don't. The only organic I do is just the meat. Mm -hmm. But other than that, like vegetables and all of them, like I'm good with that. Like I, it doesn't have to be organic, but and I don't feel bad. Like, right. It, doesn't give me any bloating or anything like that, but it's just that the meat, it's the regular chicken gets me really boring. I don't know if it's. So they do inject um, like brines and other things in regular chicken. The organic chicken, um, the chickens have to be fed organic feed, so whatever it is. So it could be whatever they're being fed. So um, for every chicken, yeah. Right? yeah. So the regular chickens. I mean, who knows what they're getting fed. Yeah. <laughs> but with the um, organic one, it is it has to be organic feed. So, so it could very well be that there's something in the other ones. Yeah. Any other questions? Nope. Okay. So, um, what about vegan or vegetarian? Anyone here vegan? Vegetarian? Yes. I tried it. <laughs> Is that healthier? I think it's next. It's it depends. It depends. It depends on what. You still have your, your regular needs. I mean, you make your protein. And, you know. I mean, it's kind of hard though. For me, it's it hard to be bad. Um, yeah. My B12 was really when I went to when I kind of switched into vegan. My B12. Um, ended up being so low, and my mom read so much. She was like, what I told you about vegan? I'm like, yeah, you're right. And I had to start taking vitamins for it, because it was low. Right, so that could be something that happens. B12, um, it's only in animal products. So if we're not eating any animal products, then you're at risk of having low B12. But there are other things like um, nutritional yeast, which is vegan, and it has B12. So it depends um, on how how well you're able to manage all of the nutrients, right? When you're vegan, you obviously can't get your protein sources from meats, but where would you get your protein from? Legumes. Legumes. Yeah. Uh, nuts. Tofu, nuts. 
like some soy products. So you just have to manage it, but um, there are also things like the potato chips, um, like the soy-based ice creams, all of those. So sometimes people think that becoming vegan or vegetarian is healthier, but again, that's not necessarily true. You, I think um, you just have to do more planning because you can't, a lot of times also restaurants may not necessarily cater to vegan diets. So making sure you're able to identify the foods that are good sources of all the vitamins and minerals that you need. But um, so it depends on just the person. What about gluten-free? Is that healthier being on the uh, gluten-free diet? Yeah, so only, really only people with celiac disease or a wheat allergy need to be on a gluten-free diet. Anyone else, it's, it's not necessary. Uh, we can, if you're able to have wheat without any problem, there's no reason to give it up. Um, a lot of times people say they go on these gluten-free diets and they lost a ton of weight, but a lot of times it's because they cut out all of those refined carbs, like your donuts and breads like pastries and things like that and so they end up losing weight because of that not necessarily because it was gluten free um, okay so superfoods let's talk about superfoods now has everyone heard this term yes what do you think about it <clears throat> i always thought avocado was one okay uh, probably blueberries, blueberries. <laughs> So what, is a, what does it mean when you say superfoods? High in antioxidants. High in antioxidants, yeah. It has a lot of benefits and not many cons. So a lot of health benefits. Um, so that's all true. It had, it's typically a nutrient-rich food. Um, I personally don't like this term just because I feel like Again, it's another one of those marketing things like kale is everywhere and then people think, well, I don't really like kale, but I'm gonna force myself to eat it because I'm gonna be healthier and that's, well, kale is good for you, but so is spinach. So if you like spinach, they're pretty much equal. Um, so why not eat the spinach instead? So again, it's a lot of it is marketing, but superfoods, um, yeah, there, there are some good, there's some foods that have a lot of antioxidants, like you said, a lot of cancer-fighting properties, but mainly it's all fruits and vegetables. So one of them is not better than the other. Um, and I think a lot of times when people hear the term superfoods, then they start eating that one food all the time. And so you're not having a variety, so like avocado. Someone may say, well, I really like avocado and it's a superfood. So they eat that all the time and then you're not getting the benefits from all the other types of fruits or vegetables out there. So um, again, watch out for the marketing claims because you see this in a lot of items that are not necessarily healthier, um, especially drinks where it'll, it'll say like superfood blend. Well, you really want to make sure that if you're gonna have the fruits and vegetables, they're whole um, and not juiced. So, yeah, and here's an example, like collard greens instead of kale. So they're both dark leafy greens, so they're both really high in the same types of vitamins and minerals, like vitamin K and lots of fiber and antioxidants. So it's not necessarily, if you don't like one of those superfoods out there, that's okay. You just eat whatever fruits and vegetables you like. Questions about that? Does that make sense to you? Okay. So other myths, myth um, debunking. So fat diets. So what kinds of fat diets have you heard of lately? The low carb, keto which is high protein, low Military. carbs. Military? Which one's that one? That was the one where you eat like ice cream and then you eat like six hours later and then 16. Intermittent fasting, you know that. Wow, All right. Blood type. So blood type, um, what else? Because there's 
um, like the cabbage soup diet, there's paleo. Um, I've heard of so many. Alkaline is another one. Then there's one when people drink apple cider vinegar <laughs> or something in the morning. Um, so diets pretty much they don't work is really, I'm just gonna come out and say, it. diets don't work. Um, a lot of times, especially these fat diets that you hear celebrities get on and they have, you know, like lose 20 pounds in 20 days. First of all, they're pretty unhealthy just because they're very low calorie a lot of times. Um, it's fast weight loss. Anyone who really needs to lose weight, it should be done at a slow pace, maybe like half a pound to one pound per week, um, not 10 or 20 per week that would be too much um, what happens in those cases is that you just end up losing a lot of muscle mass and then regaining the weight and more fat instead of all the muscle that you lost um, they also focus too much on calories so i'm not a big fan of calorie counting um, just because i feel like you focus you're, you're now focusing so much on the food itself. It's a little stressful for a lot of people too, just because you see calories posted everywhere and someone can have anxiety. And I'm not kidding, people can get, have anxiety when they see something that, and it's like, oh, 600 calories, I'm not gonna eat that. And so it really um, creates a negative relationship with food. So I'm not a big fan of calorie counting or this idea of diets and fat dieting. Um, does this concept of like calories in, calories out, equal lean weight loss work? Yeah. It does? Calorie deficit makes you lose weight. So that's what we're told, but when you're, when there's, when someone's overweight or obese, it's a multifactorial state. And so there are so many other types of biological processing going on. There are a lot of stressors, there are genetics. So telling someone to just not eat 500 extra calories and that's gonna equal weight loss, is not true and it's a very antiquated thing that we've been um, thought that we've been sort of brought up with but the science is that obesity is much more complex than that so calories in calories out that's not really the way we think about managing weight loss anymore it's more um, just because there are so many things going on or genetics like I said stress is a huge factor um, calibrating the weight loss and then getting back into um, like a set weight point. So there are a lot of things going on and just not eating a few calories is not necessarily something that is going to work for everyone. It may work for some people. If you're younger, it may work better just because when we're younger, you, metabolism is faster, but as we get older, it slows down. And um, it's just one of those things that happens <laughs> as we age. Um, but the other thing also with uh, weight loss is that our media really has talked, they shame us into thinking that like, well, you didn't lose weight. That means that you're not disciplined enough or um, you know, what's wrong with you? You were supposed to lose weight by having this calorie deficit, right? But everyone is so different and it's not gonna work for everyone. So we just end up feeling demoralized and depressed and then we're eating more and that creates a cycle. So um, calories in, calories out does not equal weight loss, not necessarily for everyone. So that's just something um, to think about. Um, and with these fat diets, a lot of times they're not sustainable. Some people just say, well, I need to lose 20 pounds for um, like my wedding or something's coming up and I need to lose weight to uh, get fit into a certain outfit and then it's not sustainable over time and rather than really building healthy habits it's just going into a cycle of like weight loss weight gain so so fat diets don't work that's the key message about this any questions okay so we talked about a lot of myths a lot of things that are may be unhealthy for us. So what is a healthy diet? Getting the right nutrition. 
So how do you get the right nutrition? So a balance, getting your protein, your carbs, carbs fats. fats, what else? Exercise. Exercise, yeah, staying active. Mental health. Yes, mental health. Good sleep. Good sleep, sorry I didn't hear you. Micronutrients, like your vegetables and all that. So micronutrients, so getting all your uh, vitamins, minerals, things like that. Um, all right, so balance, exactly. It's all about balance, but it's also about quality. So focus on your diet quality, um, not necessarily the calories and how much you're eating. Also focus on making sure that you're eating a lot of whole foods. If you're at home, look at the food around you, look at what you buy. If it's a lot of processed foods, Look at the ingredients. If there's something you can't pronounce in there, or you don't know what it is, I would say stop buying it, stop eating that. Um, our, proce our processed foods should be limited to things like uh, bread, you know, a good bread with maybe five ingredients or less. Um, dairy, if you have dairy, you know, your milk, yogurt, if you eat eggs. Um, that's not a process, but okay, so beans, something like canned beans, that's a processed food, but it's really um, good for us. So those types of foods that are still whole, um, anything that has labels, that an ingredient list that you can't read, I would say avoid that. Um, so focus on the quality. So just um, eat whole foods, is plant-based food, foods mainly and listen to your body. So what do I mean by that when I say listen to your body and your hunger cues? You can't force yourself, you can't force yourself into something you just want to Because your body doesn't need to stop, so you need to stop. And it's going to send um, a signal coming, and you need to Like when you're doing exercise, Right. It's like if I eat cake, right, I can't sleep that day. I'm like so my body just like you know, it's weird to, to eat sugar. <laughs> yeah, it's just you know, you get really like unhealthy I guess unhealthy energy, like it's not So you know what foods make you feel jittery. Right. Jittery. Okay. So and and do you know not to eat those again? Yeah, you know, sometimes you go to a wedding. <laughs> and so you'll eat it right. sometimes. Right, and you'll eat it and you're like, oh, I should not eat that. Yeah. Right. So, like, mm -hmm. so yeah, that happens. So the other thing is when we're eating, um, well, first of all, if we're hungry, we should eat. A lot of times, especially with students, I hear this all the time, <laughs> is um, I don't have time to eat. So, and that's probably one of the worst things that you can do, right? Because you're so active, you're in class, you're trying to concentrate. Um, and where are you gonna get the energy if you're not eating? So remember that our brain cells, the only form of energy they can use is glucose. And where does glucose come from? Where does that come from? So our carbs, our food, right, it gets broken down into um, the blood sugar and that's what's feeding our brain. So if you're not eating, you're not able to concentrate, you may be fatigued. So that's the first thing, listen to your hunger cues. If you are hungry, you should be eating. Um, you could pack snacks if you feel like you don't have time, but that is really important. Now when you start to eat your meal, um, just eat slowly and eat until you feel satisfied. A lot of times people are also on the run, eating really fast, and you don't even really feel <laughs> that you ate, you may forget. So that's another thing, eat mindfully so that you're able to just have a moment um, to yourself where you're enjoying your meal and you're able to just um, eat it. It's 
energizing, it should be your fuel, but it shouldn't be that you're overindulging every single time where you were just like, oh my God, I can't move, I ate so much, right? That's eating too much. And we've all done it before, but the idea is that we need to listen to ourselves and when we know that we're, that's it, you know, you put the fork down and then you stop eating. So listening to your hunger cues and when you just feel satisfied enough. Now, I like to go over this plate just because um, I know that my plate is out there a lot and there are some things on there that I'm not a fan of. I think that this is a better um, depiction of it. It's the Harvard Healthy Eating Plate. Um, so pretty much on here, instead of having dairy, it has water. Now, your plate doesn't have to look like this each time. I think sometimes people feel like you're always supposed to have um, maybe like a, let's say a chicken breast and a salad and like some rice. But that's not necessarily the case. If you have a stir fry, um, what are some ingredients in a stir fry? If you ever eat out or make your own stir fry, what do you put in stir fry? So veggies, your meat, any kind of meat. So that would be composed. It's not necessarily each component, right? Um, you could have some rice with it if you wanted to, or noodles, and that would be part of your grain. The fruit, um, you don't necessarily have to eat fruit with each meal. That's another thing that sometimes people ask me. and. If you wanted to, you can, but it's not absolutely necessary. You can always have it in between meals as a snack. If you want something sweet after eating, a lot of times people do have fruit because it gives you that um, kind of like dessert end of meal uh, type of feeling. And the oil, so this one, um, we'll talk about oils also, but being low fat is not necessarily healthy. So a lot of times when you go out to um, buy your groceries, you'll see packages that say low fat, but if they take out the fat, what do they usually put back in to make it taste just as good? Salt. Salt and mainly sugar. So the low, if you look at if comparison, a lot of times the low-fat products are higher in sugar than the regular ones. Um, okay, so let's talk about carbs then. So with this one, we talked about how they're not bad for us, right? Carbs are not bad. It's just the types that we eat. So we want something that is slower releasing um, energy such as all your whole grains. So what are some examples of whole grains? Brown rice. Brown rice. What else? Whole wheat bread. A whole wheat bread, a good whole wheat bread. Um, no, I don't think so. Oatmeal? No, I don't think so. Yeah, oatmeal. Oatmeal is a great breakfast, very, <laughs> High in fiber, it really helps make you feel full. What else? Does anyone eat um, things like quinoa or there's farro out there, um, barley, those are all whole grains. Popcorn is actually a whole grain. Um, the air popped popcorn, not like the zebra popcornopolis or something, just your plain air popped popcorn. Um, a really healthy snack, it's a whole grain. There's also whole wheat pasta. Whole wheat pasta has actually come a long way. There are some really good ones out there that don't taste like cardboard. So you just have to do some experimenting, but whole wheat pasta is something. Um, any kind of wild rice also. So those are some of your whole grains. But other things that also would be, that are, have the good, uh, it's a good type of carb are your beans. So we talked about beans. Any type of starchy vegetable too. What are your starchy vegetables? Potatoes, sweet potatoes. Po potatoes, potatoes sweet potatoes, some of the squash. Um, 
corn. So corn would be your starchy one. And those are all fine. Potatoes are fine. It's it's a vegetable. There's nothing wrong with them. It's just that most of us eat them in the form of French fries, right? But there's nothing wrong with potatoes. If you wanted something that's a little better, the sweet potatoes have um, so many more types of vitamins and minerals in them, so that would be a better option. But what you want to focus on is eating the whole foods. Does that make sense to you? Is that something that you think you can do, just eating more of the whole foods? Um, what about what we should be avoiding? So your refined sugars, so it's not just these, there's sugar in a lot of foods. It's in everything. Yeah, it is in everything. Um, there, yeah, you really have to look at labels to see whether um, additional sugar is added. But there are some examples of obviously things we should be avoiding are sugar, any kind of sugar. Uh, what about honey? No. We should. You should eat it? <coughs> Does everyone agree? Right. I can add. So it's still a processed sugar, so it's not healthier. Um, calorie for calorie, it's the same as sugar. So at the end of the day, it's still a lot of extra calories and a lot of sugar. The same thing with like maple syrup. Um, it's like we said before, yes, it's natural. Um, that's fine, but it's at the end of the day, it's still empty calories. And by that, I mean that there's zero nutritional value. It's just calories that we're eating um, that really are not necessary. Um, fruit juices, also all the white bread, the white rice, anything your donuts, pastries, all those types of sweets. It's a once in a while food. It shouldn't be something that we eat every day. Um, and so that's one of the things I want you to really start understanding. And as you're building healthier um, habits, you can eat these foods. It's just that you don't want to do it every single day so that it becomes a habit. If you're eating all those whole unprocessed foods 80% of the time, the other 20% you could eat, you know, like the go out and have a donut for breakfast or whatever it is that you like. But um, it's mainly just being consistent for most of the time. But yeah, sugar is in everything. This, it's all empty calories, especially sodas. Um, don't drink your calories. The smoothies, all the coffee drinks, frappuccinos, even coffee itself, if you put sugar in there, I would say start weaning yourself off of it um, slowly. And then you'll, your palate will start to change and you'll actually think after a while that, wow, that's really too sweet. And you're gonna start getting used to not having that sweetness. What about diet drinks? Like a diet Coke or crystal light or things like that. What do you think? Sugar. I mean, if you're hooked on, on sugar, it's best to go for one of those than the regular one, but if you want to cut it all out, it's best to cut it all out. Yeah, that's true. And so you could transition into a diet one and then start cutting it out. Um, so some of the research out there about the diet drinks is that they're, they're still sweet, so we still crave the sweetness. And then it may want us to eat more sweet things after having those, like more sugary things. So that's why it is better like, to just cut it all out. Um, just because even though they may not have calories, they still kind of trick us into wanting more of that sweetness. So I just tell people, start weaning yourself off of it. Um, and you'll, you'll get used to it. But it is a process, so um, it'll take time. Now, protein. So this is a, just a chart on some good sources of protein. Now, how much protein do we need a day? Grams per pound, right? Yeah, how many uh, grams. grams per Around pound? One per pound of your weight? So per pound, it's um, 
Well, it's 0.8 grams per kilogram. So per pound, it's like 0.36. Um, so you would multiply your weight in pounds by 0.36, and that's how you get your grams per day. Um, and you'll see that it's not a lot. For most people, it's between 45 and maybe 55 grams. So it's not as much as we think. And we're, most of us are probably eating more protein than we need. So this is just a chart of like three ounces of tuna, which is half of the cans of tuna will give us 21 grams, which is, for a lot of people, it actually may be half of what we need if, um, like if you're small and uh, like a petite woman, you would prob that's probably half of what you would need. So that's just to give you an idea of how much really um, we're eating sometimes. So assess what you're eating, and you'll see that maybe you're eating enough or too much. Most people in this country don't have like a protein deficiency. Um, so what kinds of uh, sources other than this are um, good if you're vegetarian or of protein? What sources of protein are good if you're vegetarian? Nuts, Nuts beans, eggs, eggs are good. Um, you could combine your grains with your beans, right? And that forms a complete protein. So the old rice and beans, that's a complete protein. Um, so any legume with a grain, so something like, a, let's say, peanut butter on a slice of bread. You have your bread that's the grain and then your legume coming from the peanut butter. So that's a whole grain or a whole protein, sorry, a complete protein. Um, hummus also. Uh, with maybe some pita, because you have the garbanzo beans, which are a legume, and then your pita bread. So there are different ways to have your complete proteins and be vegetarian and still be healthy without any types of deficiencies. Questions about protein or the carbs? OK. Now, fats. So on the plate that you got, we, you still have fats. We're not saying that you should be on a low-fat diet, but you do want to select the healthier fats. So we talked about trans fats and how really we should be avoiding that. Saturated fats also. Um, so any kinds of fried foods. Red meat is a very, it's very high in saturated fat as well. The whole, or whole milk, full-fat dairy, high in saturated fat. So we just need to eat less of these and eat more of the heart healthy fats. So that includes your nuts, any kind of vegetable oil, um, avocados, olives, um, anything else I'm missing with your fats? Avocado's good. What types of vegetable oils? So, so olive oil. Um, you said canola, that's a vegetable oil. There, so pretty much any vegetable oil, anything that is liquid at room temperature is the opposite of saturated fat. So it's the uh, monounsaturated fats, which are good for our heart. The saturated fats, they're solid at room temperature. So think of um, like a soup or some sort of meat stew that you make and you let it get cool. What happens to the fat? It rises and it solidifies at the top, right? So that's all the saturated fat. Um, and it pretty much clogs our car arteries in the same way that it's <laughs> thick. So that's right. We want to avoid any of those saturated fats and just go for something liquid. Yes? How much of it, how much of, of fats is a good daily dose? How much is it good? Are you taking too much, too little? So I would say like 20% of your calories per day. Yeah. 20 to 25, so yeah, it's, um, yeah, don't be afraid of fat. It's just that sometimes we get most of our fat from a lot of the saturated sources. So like the red meats and things like that. But if you're cooking your vegetables with some olive oil, 
that's fine if you're having nuts like there's I think there were some trail mix in there um, as a snack um, that's probably fine so and it also helps make you feel full it's very satiating so um, it's good but in moderation right um, and then drinking so water water is best make sure you're always hydrated Coffee or tea is okay without sugar. Sparkling water also. Um, avoid any sugary drinks. I said this before, but don't drink your calories. That's the main thing. Um, just because our body doesn't register liquids. So if you're drinking a Coke, a regular Coke, it's about 150 calories for 20 ounces. But our body isn't really registering the fact that you're getting calories, then that should be energy. It's really just empty. So for 150 calories, you could be eating maybe like a small sandwich, but that would be registered as a food. And then our body, you know, starts processing that and you start getting those hunger, um, those signals that you're full and that you're eating, but that doesn't really happen with liquid calories. So um, again, it's just excess calories that you're drinking. Um, energy drinks too. If you're relying on energy drinks for energy, I would say you have to look at what the underlying cause is because it could be that you're dehydrated, it could be that you're not sleeping, it could be that you haven't actually had a meal. So all of those things should be assessed before you're having energy drinks just because that's, um, that's a lot of caffeine, that's a lot of sugar that we don't need. Um, and so the last things are being staying active. So how much physical activity should, do you need per day, minimum? That's actually not an hour, but yeah, it's like 30 minutes. So just for, your, for being healthy, staying active is really important. If you have an hour, that's even better <laughs> to do it every day. Um, what about stress? How do you manage stress? Sleeping. <laughs> sleeping well is good. So if you're sleeping enough at night. Maintain, maintain your mental health, right? How do you maintain your mental health? Meditating. Meditating. What else? Exercise is good for our mental health and it helps relieve stress, helps it's manage that. It's good sleep. Why is that important for overall um, just eating well? How does that affect our diet? What, sleep? Stress. stress. Oh, stress. Or not managing our because stress. It just limits our body's uh, ability to like keep going, you know, like, um, metabolizing the food that we eat, you know, having good habits. So it could hinder some of your good habits. Um, a lot of times when we're stressed out, we also, we tend to make poor choices in what we're eating and maybe craving more um, like junk food, things like that. So it's important to manage the stress so that you're able to make better choices and eat healthier. And it's really all, related everything is so related because when we're eating well we're just feeling better and we're not as stressed out and we could be sleeping better also <laughs> um, also if we're dehydrated we're not thinking clearly uh, so that could also affect some of the choices we're making or if you're taking a test you're not 100% there so it all re is related so just um, you know, these are some tips to help you build healthy habits over time. Um, it's hard to change our behavior, and you know, I don't expect anyone to just completely change their lifestyle 100%, but maybe think about a couple of things that you could change right now that could help you just start building those healthy habits. Does anyone ha um, have anything that they're gonna change that you would like to share any change today so so avoiding more of the saturated fats 
Eating more fruit, that's a good one. Anyone else? Why is it that? So eating healthier fats or more like? No, I'm more like, I guess, uh, be aware of the fat. So be aware of the fat that you're, and the food you're eating. Sometimes you just consume it without even thinking about it. At least I do. Right. And I'm like, oh, eat chips. Oh, right. But even though you know, you still do it. Like in the back of your yeah, head, you know. But you still eat it. Right. And so a lot of times that's also like the texture um, or just like the act of doing something, especially if you're in front of TV. So a lot of times I tell people, well, swap out the snack. If you want something crunchy, like the popcorn, I think is a good alternative um, or something you don't like as much and then you're not going to overeat it too. It's like those trigger foods also, but um, yeah. Yeah. So. Um, but any questions? Yes, one. I'll is go it, here and then here. Uh, is eating bread, like whole wheat bread, every day bad? Well, not bad, but do you think that's like, well, in the morning, just in the morning, do you think that will like lead out to gaining weight? No, no, because it's the looking at your overall diet, so it's probably fine. Most of us eat the same things all the time, every day. Okay. So, yeah, that should be fine. Yes? So, so so if you are doing a lot of like weight lifting strength training things like that you should replenish with more um, protein just to help build the muscle or rebuild but um, not every that's not everyone's case but for for serious athletes or someone bulking up, then you probably need higher protein needs. But that's also genetic. Not everyone can bulk up. So it's a lot of things that are out of our control because of our genes. But then there are also a lot of things that we can control, and it's our behaviors we can control. So all the things here that I shared today, you can control because um, ultimately you have the choice, right, to just eat better. Eat better every day at a time. Any other questions? I just have one question. Yes. Um, what do you know of, of lectins? Lectins? Mm -hmm. ah. Is that something you've heard about? Yeah. So that's controversial right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I don't know if we have time, but I can give you my email and we can okay. talk yeah, about sure. lectins. But yeah, I've had some people. But yeah, so that's it. Um, thank you. Thanks for coming. Thank you so much for that presentation. You want to draw the name out of the hat?